the passion, the interest, the drive was to create something that would be commercially viable in wartime. So this was a very active place for that period of time, 1928 through 1936. We're in the Edison Research Lab. It was built in 1928 and was very active until 1936. His primary focus for laboratory work was New Jersey. Um, Edison's life uh, in the early days was built around the creation of electricity. And in the early days, uh, the focus of that, of course, was New York City. It was Manhattan. And so his primary residence uh, for the second half of his lifetime, for 40 years, was just outside uh, New York City in a little town called West Orange, New Jersey. Edison arrived in 1885. It was a very cold winter up north, and uh, he stopped first in Jacksonville in St. Augustine, and it was cold there. So he made his way across the state on a rickety railroad and came by boat to Fort Myers in 1885 and um, fell in love with the property thought, hey, I can use this as a winter retreat, I can also raise plants here, I can bring my new family here. Uh, and he built a home for himself, and he built a home for his partner, a man named Ezra Gilliland. Uh, and they remained partners for a few years and then had their differences, and Edison bought his partner's home. There are two mirror image homes, uh, one for Edison and his family, and one for his important guests who would visit often. Edison's interest in plants on this property began when he first arrived here. Uh, he was looking for a plant filament that could be used in the light bulb, and that was bamboo. And so he imported bamboo and planted it on the property. We have several dozen varieties of bamboo on the property now. Uh, he, he loved palm trees. We've got almost 100 varieties of palms on the property. He also brought the royal palm to Fort Myers, and now it lines 10 miles of uh, roadway here. Part of the reason why this lab was so important was that it caused the U.S. government to come forward with what was called the patent, uh, the U.S. patent law, uh, which then said that if you invented something with plants uh, and it was a process that was worthy of patenting, it was issued a patent. Until that time, uh, the patent process in this country had been for mechanical devices for um, machinery, uh, for uh, things that moved and operated for mechanics. Uh, and it wasn't until really the early 1900s that the, the era of plant scientists, the George Washington Carver, uh, that whole new era of plant scientists emerged. So the patent process for plants was very critical uh, in America and internationally. American industry during the late 1800s was very interesting because it was just the beginning of the machine age in this, uh, in this country. Uh, Henry Ford worked for Thomas Edison. He worked for the Edison Illuminating Company in Detroit. And uh, he was uh, younger than uh, Edison. He was 15 years younger than Edison. So really their friendship was based on um, kind of a love of invention, uh, interest in how to take things from um, the process of creating it through commercialization. Uh, by 1904, Henry Ford had created the um, Ford Motor Company, so he no longer worked for Edison. But they stayed very close, and uh, friendship, mentorship, um, certainly a lot of shared projects. Henry Ford visited many times, and by 1915, he bought the estate next door. And the idea would be the two men would vacation together, certainly work and play. And so from that time on, they were neighbors and it really became almost an expected thing that Edison and Ford both would be here in Fort Myers in the winter months. Uh, by the 1920s, uh, the United States was relying on foreign rubber and we were headed into war. So at that point, they decided the plant material and the process should be done in this country. Edison, Ford, and Firestone were traveling all over the world collecting plants, and in fact had uh, hundreds, thousands of people all over this country collecting plants and sending them back here to Fort Myers to his laboratory to find a source of plant material that could produce rubber efficiently, effectively, uh, commercially. Um, so the laboratory was put here because of that reason, because they could grow the plants here on site and then actually do the preliminary research on site. 
all three of the men had an interest in using rubber products in their industries, and they wanted to produce that economically, efficiently, and have it available to them. The interesting thing about this laboratory is Edison was a very early proponent of what we today call a, a, a factory system. Each one of the tables in here would have had a different operation going on, and the team of scientists around that table would be working on that particular process. Edison would be moving through the processes happening at each table. Um, his work was that of the director, the man who took what everyone was working on and take that process and move it to the next step. So if he were here, he would be the thoughtful overseer. Um, now, I'm not saying he didn't also do work in the lab himself, but he had a very talented group of people who were working with him. Um, in addition to uh, himself, he also had a full-time glass blower because a lot of the work that was happening in here used um, some very different uh, beakers, test tubes, and glass material, and he soon learned that in order to make the process right, he had to create the glass himself. So he brought in a gentleman from Europe who was his full-time glass blower. He also had a full-time machinist. Uh, an interesting feature of this laboratory is the metal shop uh, because, of course, in addition to glass, a lot of what he was doing was working with metal pieces. In some cases, creating them from scratch or uh, changing them slightly, modifying them, or repairing them. So this laboratory had to have been a very interesting um, uh, place at various times. Some of the most interesting inventions that uh, Edison has to his credit uh, are certainly the ones that we know about the most. His love of the phonograph, uh, electricity, the light bulb. And then the last part of his life was plant science. He was very successful here in this laboratory finding a source of rubber that could be grown in this country. Uh, the plant goldenrod successfully could be harvested, the chemical process took place, and it did produce a source of rubber that could be commercially viable. Uh, in American and world history at that time, though, we were just coming out of the Depression, and the project was not funded here in Fort Myers. It was taken by Henry Ford to Savannah, where it then did move on to some mixed success. Um, but he did show that we could raise a source of organic rubber in this country that could be available for commercial production. We think of Edison, Ford, and Firestone, all three, as being green scientists, very early understanding of we have to look to our natural resources and replenish them in order to be successful as a country. And uh, that's where we are today. We're looking at sources of fuel. Uh, is petroleum enough or should, be, should we be looking at other sources, plant sources? And Edison, Ford, and Firestone all understood that.